Hi, and welcome to Cockatude, Cockatoos with Attitude and Friends. Speaking of friends, we have, <laughs> we have Buddy in here with us today, our Congo African Grey. And out in the separate cage, we have Marley. He hasn't quite learned how to deal with the other birds yet, but he lets me bring him out here, so he likes to come out. He gets vocal sometimes. We have the rest of the crew in here. The only one we don't have in here with us today is Roman, and uh, he's gone through one of his little paranoid periods again, so. What we're gonna talk about today is feather destructive behavior and the right way to deal with it. There's a lot of uh, ideas out there, most of which don't work. Um, of course, you wanna, you wanna work with the environment. You wanna give them the, the calmest place you can. You wanna to try to keep them from being stressed, but that isn't gonna stop it. You can't live your whole life walking on eggshells. And if that's what you're gonna do, you're probably gonna be uh, an unhappy person, and so is your bird. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. To science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. The Chloe Sanctuary hopes to give you insight into the health and happiness of your companion parrots. We hope to help you build happy homes using reliable and proven tools. The best homes are built on a rock-solid foundation. And the best foundation for a happy home is the bedrock of science. When we stand on the shoulders of giants, the scientists who have worked long and diligently to understand our companions, we can reach new heights of understanding. And understanding is the key to success. I think treated, most of these birds have a good prognosis, and I would say in... What does avian veterinary medicine have to tell us about our feathered friends? How can the tools of behavior shaping make our homes happier for us and our companions? Shape. How can we deal with biting, screaming, or other misbehavior? What is it like to live among parrots, let them roam around about you and share a life with them? Of the Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness. But who do we have with us today? That's Lorelei. No buttons, huh? Well, there are some things you could try to eat off my shirt, and you probably will, knowing you. And Lucy, Lucy girl, and Babalu, and Cecil. And I don't know, as far as the cameras, which one of these birds is going to pick up. I don't have a roving camera in here. There are four cameras going right now, but it's kind of hit and miss the way they're angled, so we'll see how this turns out. We've had several of our patrons asking for me to do this, so I'm crossing my fingers this works out. And we have Cause and Peaches. She's on the ground, so you can't see her. She's on the floor. Bob, you're not going to go for my microphones either. And Buddy up on the, on the food dishes, right, Buddy? Buddy, can you shake your head for me? Buddy, there you go. Good boy. And then we have Coco, Coco Bird over there, Salamander, and Snowball up there, and Peaches, Peaches, and Sugar, and, and Pippa over that way. So, the usual crew, right Bob? Yeah, we recently had somebody who's been trying to work with their bird, and um, you know, we use haloperidol. We actually use a scientific veterinary method. Um, one that's worked well for Dr. Jenkins for 10 years. We're talking a decade of, of helping over 90% of the birds. Now here's the thing, the reason he's only able to help 90% and not 95 is that you also have to train the people. And some people are, it's much easier to train a bird honestly than it is most people, so. You get, uh, so we had somebody who tried using haloperidol and, and the bird wasn't behaving the same as they used to. Well, if you're under stress, if you've known anybody who's gone on psychotherapeutic dress, uh, drugs, someone who gets 
really highly freaked out, you know, and goes through manic periods and then is depressed the other part of the time. When they go on the drug, they don't act, act the same, right? They have to try different drugs until they find something that helps to level it out so they don't have so many highs and lows without sending them into a total null zone, right? So I've met people I didn't even realize they were on psychotherapeutic drugs. They seemed to be happy, getting along in life, seemed to be right there, and I didn't even realize it. Um, but then I've seen those same people when for some reason they went off the drugs for a little bit and they were nuts, right? But they didn't act the same. When I say nuts, I mean they weren't acting like what I was used to seeing. So with these guys, if you give, you give a bird some haloperidol, you're going to see some behavioral changes. You're going to see that. Um, the kind, probably similar to the kind of uh, changes you see when you get home and you're tired from a day of work, you kick your shoes off, you sit down with a drink, you know, pop a beer or have some wine or, or you light up a joint or whatever it is you do to relax. Now, if you've got birds, you don't want to be lighting up a joint around them. And if you've got alcohol, you don't want them to get to it. We're talking two things they can't handle. We're always going to have traffic out here, and I'm hoping these microphones I have under my neck, if Lorelei doesn't eat them, are going to help cut out some of that because it has a built-in compressor and you know, expensive stuff we use to do videos here. But we're, we're hoping that will make it so that you can hear me, but who knows? So anyway, you get home, you pop a beer, you kick back and you turn on the TV. Why do you do that? Because you're kicking off the stress of the day, right? These guys, they were raised by breeders. They never got to meet their parents. They don't, didn't know their parents. They, most of them weren't around other birds of their kind at all. And even if they were, they weren't, you know, they were in a situation that wasn't social. So they missed steps in their development. And when you miss those steps, there's no going back to fix that. They did that to me back in the 50s. Back in those, right? <laughs> yeah, you love it when I talk like this, don't you, Bob? Then you have to shake your head. He gets into it, don't you? You guys don't get too into it. This is not a bordello, okay? It's not a bordello. See, so? So they put me in one of those little walkers, you know, because you can put them in there and kind of leave them alone. They can't really get into much, and they just kind of get to move around on the floor. You've seen them. They're kind of round. You put the child in it, and the child can't get out, and then they just kind of go around. Well, they found that if you leave a child in those for very long, for more than 15 minutes at a, at a time, the chance of getting dyslexia increases just geometrically. So a lot of kids from that era have dyslexia. I'm one of them. I've got a quick mind. I have other issues, too. I have uh, something that affects my memory of, of time, but so that I don't remember yesterday. I remember all kinds of technical details, but I couldn't tell you what I did yesterday. But anyway, that has nothing to do with, with missing steps in my, in my development. That's just something that's genetic from what they can tell. But anyway, as I was saying, these guys have missed enormous steps in their de development. Their parents didn't sit on the eggs. The male and female keep the egg warm. Very good, Peaches. Do you have a second verse? That's a pretty song. Oh, yes, you do have a second verse. Well, that's a good, well, hello, that's a good girl. Well, you can come up here if you want. You want to come up, Peach? You want to come up? You going to come up? No, I'm not going to pet you down there. Are you going to come up? Come on. No. Okay. Yeah, she wants me to pet her over there, and you have to lean over like this, and I'm not doing that while I'm doing a video. So um, she knows she can come up, though. She wants to change her mind. When you go to get her to step up, if she takes this one step back away from you, that means she doesn't want to step up. So that's where we were. You're not going to eat the microphones, kid. You're not. So because they've missed these steps in their development, they're functionally autistic, okay? Functionally means it was, they weren't born that way, uh, like, you know, or hatched that way, like most autistic people are. It was because of the way they were raised, because they weren't raised in a flock, because, you know, over 90% of what these guys know is what they learn. It isn't innate, it's not inborn, okay? Some things are, like yelling at the sun when it rises and yelling at the sun when it goes down. I think I probably would too if I went blind when it got dark, but 
They have incredible visual powers, just amazing visual powers. Then the lights go out and they're completely gone. They don't see anything. So, uh, Talk about being in a world that's like being on LSD one minute and locked in a closet, totally dark the next. So you're not going to fix it. And what happens in the world around, you know, when you, people tell me, well, I, I went on vacation, I came back and my bird was plucking. And they think that's what caused it. No. No. That's like when uh, I say, Bob, step up, step up. Okay, I gave him a cue and he stepped up. But that behavior of stepping up comes from before. Okay? It was something he was taught to do. I taught him to step up, right? Okay, so it was a, it's a behavior that's already there. I cue the behavior and it happens. So because this, this, this tendency to self-mutilate is there because of the way these breeders raise them, and if I could say breeders with more venom, I would. Breeders. I guess that kind of says it right. Breeders. Um, because of the way they raise these birds, not letting the parents raise them, and I've heard their stories and I've heard their excuses and they can take those and put them where the sun doesn't shine, okay? Um, they're doing it for money. The majority I've met, I'm sure there are a few good ones out there, but they're doing it for money. They're not letting the parents raise them. They're trying to maximize their profit. I hope there's a special, I don't even believe in hell, but I hope there's a special place for them, if there is one. Um, I know, Bob, I know. I know, sweetheart. So you're not going to fix that. And it, it, this kind of functional autism that they have causes a chemical imbalance in the brain, right? That's where emotions come from. Your emotions are chemical imbalances in your brain. That's what they are. Now, emotions are there for a reason. I mean, obviously, you see a tiger out in the forest, you go, ah, you run away. Okay, that's what the emotions are there for. That's part of w why we have them. They developed over time into social things as well, but originally it was like, ah, it's going to eat me, and you run off, right? Or, oh, that looks good, I want to eat it. I mean, all these things are chemicals happening in your brain. So, because they have this imbalance, the only way you're going to deal with it is to give them some kind of chemicals. Now, I know that once in a while we're talking, you know, there's a bell curve, okay? And the majority of things happen in that big bulge on the bell curve, and little things happen at the ends. Once in a while, there'll be a bird that sings, right? <laughs> right, peaches. Right, peaches. Once in a while, there'll be a bird that, for whatever reason, stops plucking, okay? The cues aren't in the environment. Uh, something, they're just, they, they're kind of in a perfect situation where nothing is triggering it. Um, and so on occasion, you'll have a situation like that and everybody will go, oh, see, oh, see Martha over there, she or her bird, she didn't give it any drugs and it got better. Okay, that happens. That's the bell curve, right? There are some that are simply like Bob's in the bell curve. He has a prolapse. He's not happy with his, you know, he's happy with part of his life, being out here, that kind of thing, right, Bob? But because he's not happy like he used to be, that's triggered his feather destructive behavior, and he doesn't do well on Haldol. It just, he's just too hyper, and when you give it to him, he gets too hyper. His hyper goes way off to the roof. <laughs> It is ignorance of Bob's nature that turned Bobaloo into a living gargoyle. Bob's would-be parents made a hasty choice and found themselves in living hell, torn between guilt and frustration. I have seen the joy in Bobaloo's eyes now that he has a new life with me as his companion. To see Bobaloo love and trust again is worth the effort of a lifetime. But, once again, Bob is heading toward the pain of separation. My heart nearly broke the day I discovered that he was heading toward a cloacal prolapse, that his life will be cut short. To find love and acceptance and then have it stolen away from you by failing health is too much to bear. We can slow the progress of his failing health, but we can't stop it. 
He will need several surgeries, and eventually, Babalu will die. We want to give him the best possible life until that day. His surgeries will become progressively more expensive over time. Won't you please lend Babalu a hand and donate to his medical fund today? Our donation button is on our webpage at www.chloesanctuary.org. Just be sure to say, for Bob, in the notes when you donate. <laughs> And then he's like beating his head against the cage bars. That's because he, yeah, because he's just so bound up with energy and it just releases all that at once. Um, it's possible that if I gave it to him for a long period of time, he might overcome that. Uh, but his lifespan is short anyway. And uh, if you don't know it, uh, feather destructive behavior leads to mutilation, leads to death by infection generally, or blood loss. Uh, sugar almost died three times on me with blood loss. Uh, so, it's not something you're going to fix with magic fairy dust. And I know that uh, some companies, one company has just recently brought back a product that does absolutely nothing. These spray-on products that are supposed to help your bird with, feather, just with their feather destructive behavior. I'll tell you what, you have some of that stuff, you're paying high dollars for it, try this. <laughs> That's a Pippa. That's a Pippa. That's a Pip. I don't know if the camera got that. It might have. It might have Pippa. It might have Pippa. Lorelei, you're not going to work your way up to the microphones, please. Thank you. I hope not, anyway. So, where was I before Pippa inter interrupted me? Oh, okay, so try this, right? One day, when you're there, spray them with water instead of your special magic fairy dust stuff, okay? And I think you'll notice that they stop plucking when they're wet. Because anything that's homeopathic is absolutely useless. That's pre... I know, Peaches. That's pre-scientific. The guy that invented that, if he tried to do that today, everybody would just laugh at him. But because it's an old idea, people think it has some merit. It doesn't. I don't know why, but Australia did three separate studies to prove that it, that it doesn't work. It doesn't even leave anything in the water behind. They've looked. You know, when you find a, a, just one little dot of something inside water, okay, we call that a mole, which is just one element of whatever it is. They can't even find a mole of anything inside the water except water, and except if there's some, like, junk, you know. Ta the water's tainted with something, but so homeopathic is useless. And then when you start saying, well, I'm going to use flower essence, la, 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 magic fairy dust, that stuff doesn't help, okay? Using flower essences and, and rubbing them with crystals and chanting over them is not going to do them any good, okay? Um, the only thing I've seen that works, and the only thing that has any scientific backing, is using psychotherapeutic drugs. Now, haloperidol isn't the only one. You can give them Valium. Dr. Jenkins talked about that. He said, if you don't have a problem giving them Valium, Valium every two hours, then it works. But with Valium, it's in, the doses are every two hours. With Haldol, it's twice a day. I've seen it where it's once a day with some birds. <laughs> what are you saying, Bob? I've seen it where it's once a day with some birds. I've seen it where it had to be three times a day for a while until they kind of got into the groove. Um, I'm thinking that with Buddy it may work out that way because I have caught him sometimes in the middle between the two being a little feather destructive. He doesn't do it after you give him the drug. And for the first four hours or so, I know he's not doing it then, so he may actually have to have it three times a day and I just take the dose and and, you know, take whatever he's getting for the total day, divide that by three, and give him that dose, you know, one, two, three. But, or I could do it another way, which would be to give him the full dose and then a little bit of a bump, maybe a third of a dose, and then another full dose. But we'll, we'll work it out. 
that's another thing. People who use Haldol will, uh, you know, try it out. They don't adjust the drug. It's not going to work. When I went in for my thyroid problem, um, making sure they haven't turned something off. No, it's all running. Watch where you put your face. I know you. You're destructive. She's more like a moth than she is a bird, aren't you? You're just looking to get a hold of a wire and chew it through or whatever. I know you. You're cute, though. You're the cute. You're a cute girl. Yes, you are. So there are other other drugs that have been tried. Um, I mean, I've tried them too. Um, and if you've got the manual of parrot beho beh bleh. if you have the manual of parrot behavior, there's a whole section in pharmacology in there. Okay, and it. It tells you what the drugs are used for, for different situations. If you've got a bird that's acting depressed, if you've got a bird that's hyper, if you've got one that's aggressive, there are different drugs that may help. Just like for some of you, when you come home, you just have to light up a joint. For some of you, when you come home, you just have to have a beer. For some of you, when you come home, you just have to turn on the television set and watch something stupid like Dancing with the Stars because if you don't zone out, you're going to go crazy. You know, we as human beings are no more meant to live in this kind of society. We're hunter-gatherers, right? We're not meant to live in this kind of world and it, it, it takes a toll on us. That's why there's, in the United States, there's so many suicides more than any other country in the world. And we're talking about, if you talk about a thousand, if you take a thousand people, the number we have in every thousand is gonna be the more, more than suicides anywhere else. Except in some third world countries that are having problems right now. How about you? You, you leave, you stop, Bob, Bob. You stop, you stop bothering Bob. No, 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 good girl. Bobaloo, go, go somewhere else, go, you leave him alone, you leave him alone. Bob, I'm taking care of it. You can come back in a minute. It's not your fault, but she's getting aggressive to you. A little aggression between her and him. When they, when they start eyeballing each other and squawking, you gotta get them separated. Buddy's not gonna hurt you. Don't be a big chicken. Well, Babaloo's not a chicken. He's a cockatoo. Now, I know, you're just, I, you are a good boy. You're a friendly bird. So, unless you... Now, if there's a hawk, I'll... Bob? Nope. Come here. You get on my lap. Right there. Now, it's all right. That's all right. You calm down. You be calm. This, this poor one, the lead poisoning. Now, that's another thing, too. Now, you're not going to fix the... You know, unless you've got a time machine, and you can go in your way back machine, and make a change you know you can be a time bandit and go back and make a change and have it so their parents raise them you're not going to fix it with any of these other things that aren't medically helpful okay you're gonna have to use psychiatric drugs in almost every case and uh, there are exceptions like I said in the bell curve but people will that in, in the old the old style stuff that people talked about was um, lead poisoning. That's almost never the case. Uh, I've talked to three different vets about that and they've never actually seen it. Okay, and they don't know of any cases of birds that were chewing their cage and the cage had lead in it. Where they did find a problem with lead and where lead cued that behavior, remember it doesn't create it, it just cues it. Something in the environment cues these behaviors that are built in from the way they were raised by these breeders, okay? And they weren't, they weren't raised by their parents and they weren't in a flock. So if they swallow it, if there's a lump of lead in their system, that's the only time it's been seen. Dr. Young could tell you about that because he worked at the, the uh, San Diego Zoological Society. And that's, and all the animals he dealt with, 
That was the only time you ever found metal toxicity is when they actually ate something. This one had to have it removed, okay? So that's probably where her feather destructive behavior was cued. That was probably the trigger, okay? But it was waiting. It's just sitting there waiting in all these birds, okay? So people will tell you, well, you have to have the right environment. You have to try not to stress them. All oh, that's true. You always want to do that. I mean, that's, that's just a normal behavior. You want to try to give them the most comprehensively happy life you possibly can. That's, that's a clo as close as you can get to the wild. This makes a difference. We're out here. They're looking out, they're playing with each other, they're goofing off, I'm kind of quiet today, but they're doing more like natural things. You take them back into that socialization room where they're cramped in there. Actually, the room is bigger than this, okay? But it feels cramped because you can't see the world around. And I've got to deal with issues between them all the time. And the issue that I just had with Bob and, and Pippa it would have been much worse in there. Pippa would have probably tried to attack Bob, and then Bob would go to defend himself. He does, he's not a fighter. He's, he'll defend, but he doesn't like to fight. Now, he'd fight for me if, if he had to protect me, and he's done that once, <clears throat> where my friend actually took and whacked me on the arm as he was telling me a story about a turkey that whacked him. And Bob was lunging for his face, right towards his eyes. But I had his feet, so, you know, I, I'm always aware that those kind of things can happen, but... Um, all right, Bob. You're awfully close to her. Are you trying to cause a problem? She doesn't take too well to you being close to her. Peach. Peach eyes. I'm not going to pet you down there. Not. I will after I put the cameras up. Okay? So if you're going to try to use some of these over-the-counter remedies to help your bird, you might as well go to a, to, you might as well go to a shaman, you know? Go find yourself a witch doctor and have them cast a spell. Or so, somebody who does voodoo and have them, you know, do the voodoo thing. Um, peaches, I'm not going to pet you down there. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it, no. I'm sorry. Peaches, I'm not going to do it. Hello? No, I'm not going to do it, sweetheart. Not not right now, no. If you want to come up, you can, but I got Bob and Pete, Pip up here. You probably, probably don't want to. You can come up if you want to. You want to come up? Peaches, you can come up. Now you step back. That's typical. No, I'm not petting you down there. I'm not doing it. No. So if you're going to waste your money on magic fairy dust, go right ahead. Now, this is the other thing. Human beings have confirmation bias, right? So if you spray a little magic fairy dust over your bird and it doesn't pick for a day, you go, oh, it's working. No, that's because that's what you want it to do. So you, your mind will try to fit it in. It will always try to look for something that fits what you want it to be. That's why people believe that things come in threes, because something happens and they go one. Something else happens, they go two. Something else happens and they say three. And then they start over again. One, two, three. One, two, three. And they do this their whole life long. Didn't come in threes. You're just perceiving it that way because, you, because that's how your mind makes it happen to you. Okay? It's called confirmation bias. So you expect to see something and then you see it. My dad had that. You know, I, he'd be driving along and he'd go, woman driver, woman driver. He's been gone quite a while now. But as soon as somebody would cut him off or whatever, if it was a woman, he'd go, well, that's the woman driver for you. But if a man cut him off, Bob, you're bouncing on my wrist and driving me crazy. I don't want you down there. Why don't you get up there? Thank you. Well, I, I know you don't like me doing the cameras out here. I can see it already. But. Here comes a motorcycle.
They really ought to put mufflers on those things. Um, so he would, but some guy would cut him off and he wouldn't say anything. So then he would say, women are such terrible drivers. Well, that's because he was just picking out the women. That's confirmation bias. So <coughs> you go buy this stuff that says, use this and your bird won't pluck anymore, right? And you put it on the bird, you spray them, and you say, well, look, my bird's not plucking. Of course, you got your bird wet, and I have yet to see a bird pluck feathers when they're wet. I don't think you can keep them wet all the time to stop it, but somebody could try, I suppose. But I guess eventually they'd overcome that and start plucking anyway, but... So, if you're going to do what we've done, which we've just helped so many birds, I mean, and they... This one had was a mess. She didn't have any feathers, and she's just beautiful now. And this is the same personality. It took a while. She acted differently for a while. She's a little more sure of herself today. I mean, obviously, we're doing enrichment, giving her toys. Um, she gets special time with, with me and time with others as they volunteer and that kind of thing. Right, baby? Yeah. Come here, Bob. I'm not trying to get rid of you. It's just both of you on my lap at the same time is not a good thing. I don't want any fighting to break out. Yeah. So where you'll hear someone else say, you know, do the enrichment, make sure they have the right kind of food. You'll, now, here's another one that's a good one. Well, people say, well, a lot of it has to do with the lighting. Okay. If you don't have the right lighting, no, they get, need 12 hours of dark and 12 hours of night. Um, and if you get less than that, if they're getting less, less uh, dark, don't do it, Lorelei. No, Lorelei, don't mess with the camera. Get away from it. Go on. Lorelei, come here. I can't read her mind, but I can sure read her behavior. Right, Lorelei? No, you aren't going to do that. Right? I'm watching you. So, now you're not going to eat my microphones either. You're not going to do that. Or the cords that are in my shirt. No, you're not. You're not. You're not. You're cuteness. You're very cute, but you're also sneaky. Here's a sneak. Yes, you are a sneak. So when it comes to lighting, now imagine this. These guys, all the ones, the ceram cockatoos here and the umbrellas, are all from the equator. Okay, where the days are 12 hours long and the nights are 12 hours long. So how would changing the lighting affect them? Well, it wouldn't affect them in any normal way. Their bodies aren't built to react to longer days and shorter nights and that kind of thing. So, so when people start talking about that, we know they're talking out of something besides their mouth. <laughs> I guess that makes no sense. Um, and I've heard... I've heard some people who are vets actually say that, and it's like, no, it's not true about umbrellas. Now, it might affect their behavior somehow because they're used to 12 hours, but it isn't going to affect their breeding, and so it isn't going to change their hormone level, and their hormone level isn't going to spike into more, be more uh, feathered uh, destructive behavior. It's not going to do that, okay? Um, because it's, that's not how they work. They're not set to that kind of rhythm. So, other birds, yes, but certainly not the ones from, from Indonesia. Now, Bob is, you know, he's, he's from an island off the coast of Australia, so I mean, his, his kin are anyway. So, he does have a reaction to dark and light. But that isn't, no, you're not going to eat the microphone. You get a little pest and you're not going to hurt her. You're, okay, Laura Light, you're going to go somewhere else because you're just... You're just a, you're just trouble. 
You managed to find a cord hanging out. She's just... If you want to pay for it, you can pay for it. But I don't think you have anything in your bank account. Right? So the best information, and I'll, I'll be as honest as I can. When I first was dealing with this with Chloe, and she was just coming apart, just tearing feathers out like crazy, um, Dr. Jenkins, when he first mentioned giving her a drug, I, I went, well, I... Do we have to give her a drug? I mean, I, I wasn't too thrilled with the idea. And then, you know, I wanted to be a vet at one time, so I'd taken, you know, physiology and biology classes. And so he went through the whole thing and kind of reminded me of what goes on in the mind, right? And you can see that in our video. It's our video number 14 on feather destructive behavior, but where he talks about that. But then I thought about it, and I did a little research, and I, in the Manual of Parrot Behavior, it talks about how it works and um, the, the effectiveness of it and that kind of thing. And Now I've got most of these birds came to us be, because we do ask that. You know, if we have an opening, it's, we want a bird that has a problem, right? We want a bird that has issues. Uh, like we have Marley over there. He has a neurological problem with his left eye. You can't open it right. And you can open it some of the time and not some of the other time, you know. Um, and he likes to eat people. His nickname is Hannibal Lecter. But I, just, I think I'm going to put that in the video because I have one camera facing that way. I take him out here and put him in that cage, holding him on a small perch where he could reach over and bite me if he wants to. And. Usually I will bait him. Baiting means you put a piece of something they want in front of them. But today I brought him out with no bait. He doesn't eat it anyway. Yeah, he doesn't eat it out here. I mean, he's got food in there, but he doesn't eat the edamame that he likes to fight. So what, instead of that today, he likes to say, I love you, don't you, Marley? I love you, Marley. I love you. And I say that to him as he comes out, and you can tell he's a little upset because he's got his tail fanned out. He, he did not like men, I was told. Um, and there isn't a bird in the world you can't get out of that situation. Um, but all the birds we have here, but all the birds we have here, you know, have a problem, okay? If somebody were to say we had an opening, I have a perfectly normal bird, it has no problems, we're not going to take them. Because we have limited space and we want to deal with the ones that really need help. All of them need help. I wish we had room to, to adequately take care of 500 birds, you know? But that would mean you'd have to have a big volunteer staff, no more than five birds without one person for those five. Um, so that they could get out every day and play and, you know, get outside too. And How does that song go? If I were a rich man, da, 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 but we are not. So if you're doing the protocol with Haldol, you're going to see some behavioral changes. The only things you have to worry about, it's true of anything, is... Usually for the first 48 hours, they don't eat much, okay, when you're giving it to them at first. So, you gotta weigh your birds, and if you don't know how to weigh your birds, it's time to learn. And they don't have to have a special perch, they can get on a regular scale, like a kitchen scale, which is what these guys use. And just make sure they're not losing too much weight. You don't want them to lose more than 10%, and it appears, we don't know for sure, but it appears that birds are a little overweight. So when they get on Haldol, they will settle down to a slightly lower weight, and that will become their norm. Um, and then, stereotypic behavior. That's where, like, you tell a bird to step up, and it moves its foot, and its foot shakes, and it can't quite get its foot over to you. Or where it's, you know, hey, let go of my toes. Coco, no, Coco, stop it, <coughs> cut it out. <coughs> What's with you biting my shoes? So if you see that kind of behavior, you probably need to give them a little bit more. And what the book says to do and what I do is 
if they're showing feather destructive behavior, still, uh, I raise the dosage by 0 0.01 milliliters, and you can look up what that looks like online, okay? I mean, we're still living in a country which uses the English measurement system, and even the English don't use it. It's ridiculous. It's hard to convert, but it makes it easier for McDonald's to sell a quarter pounder, because what is a quarter pounder? It's four ounces. But if you convert that over to grams, you know exactly how much you're getting. Once you know grams or liters, you know exactly how much you're getting. But when somebody says eight ounces or half a quarter, you know, it's, let's face it, that's antiquated. So anyway, you watch their weight, make sure they don't lose more than 10%. Now, if they did lose more than 10%, you better slow down the Haldol down because there's an issue with them not wanting to eat. Um, Lorelei, you can't be down here. Come on, I know what you want to do. You're not going to eat my microphone. Um, I love you, Lorelei, but not right now. Not right now. No, you're not coming down here. No, Lorelei, get, go on, go on. Go somewhere else. You poor, you can come up here. You can come up here. I just don't want you sitting there where I know what you're going for. You're going for the microphones. Okay, I know you. That's why I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do it out here because I knew I'd have to wear these because of those cars passing by. But so if you see, but if you see stereotypic behavior, you see where they're having trouble moving their limbs or shaking, they're getting a little too much. Lower it down by 0 0.01 until you get normal behavior. And then you'll reach a baseline where they're not picking and they're not doing anything weird, okay, after the first hour. Usually with the first 20 minutes, after about 20 minutes, they, the drug starts to have an effect, and for the first hour, they'll be a little slower, but after that, they're usually, they usually pick up the pace better than before, so um, work with it. Don't expect the drug to, well, I, the doctor said to give it to me, I was supposed to give 0 0.05 millimeters, let's see, that's there. No, you have to be able to adjust it. Excuse my southern accent, I could have done that in any accent accent but what happens is accents just pop into my head and I use whatever comes in I could have done that in the Russian it would have been no problem I'm telling you comrade I the doctor doctor say 0 0.05 milliliter I do 0 0.5 milliliter I don't do more I don't do less no no we follow party policy so anyway um now, what, what you're doing, Putin didn't say you could touch my head. Um, <laughs> I'm losing my mind. But you have, to, you, have, you have to do that. You have to adjust the drug. Just like when I got my... my um, I have thyroid medicine I have to take, okay? They didn't give me a dose and say, this is it. They gave me a dose, they checked my blood, they gave me a dose until they got it right. Then they checked my blood every year to make sure that my dose is correct. With these guys, you gotta pretty much look all the time. And you go by behavior, okay? Um, if they're starting, you can see they're starting to pluck or they're getting a little antsy or they're starting to try to build a nest, you might wanna give them 0 .01 more. Raise it up a little bit. That's what the book says to do. You see them starting to pull on their feathers a little, you definitely want to go up, and you do that every two days, okay? It's called titrating to effect. Doctors know about it. Paramedics know about it. If you know a paramedic, a doctor, or a nurse, ask them about titration and why you do it. Talk to somebody you know. Don't just believe what I say. You can read about this stuff in the Manual of Parrot Behavior. You can watch our video number 14 with Dr. Young where he explains all this in, in, you know, in detail. The man knows. Uh, he's been saving birds forever. And that's with people that are hard to deal with. People that go home and say, well, I really don't feel comfortable raising the dose. And the bird's still pick, picking feathers out. Um, and expect personality changes. 
You don't act the same when you've had a couple of beers, right? You don't act the same when you've, you've just taken a toke off a joint. You act different. Expect it. Imagine what it would be like if your bird's all frustrated, and believe me, the, the, the reason they do it is because of frustration. As I've said before, it's like cutting your wrist and calling 911. Well, why do they call their wrist if they're trying to commit suicide? People say, oh, it's a cry for help. No, it isn't. When they cut their wrist, it releases the, you know, they're, they're, they're stressed, right? Speaking of stress, yes, Peaches. They, Peaches, Peaches. Oh, she's gonna do that now. When they cut their wrist, it's because they're stressed. When you cut, when you cut yourself, you release, all right, you tell me about it. Ah, no, Bob. Bob. Calm down, Bob. Bob Alou. Calm down. We have neighbors. Yeah, I wouldn't calm them down, but we we only live on we only live on an acre. We're not living out in the middle of a hundred acres, okay? Would you, no, no, no. You stop taunting her, no. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Yeah, it's a hawk, okay, all right. That's funny, yeah. So when you cut yourself, you release endorphins. It's like, it's like getting a shot of heroin, okay? All of a sudden you're like, oh, I feel so much better. I, then you call 911 because you don't want to die. It's, it's not a caught cry for help. People get that wrong. It's, self -med it's, it's self medication. They're medicating themselves by damaging themselves, okay? So you have a choice between be given, between giving your birds m medication so they'll feel better or letting them self-medicate. <laughs> and I don't, the self-medication eventually ends up with a infection and death. And I've also heard people say that, well, I don't, you know, it doesn't bother me that my bird's missing feathers. That's not the point. You're freaking out. Go up here. Go on. Up there. Go on. Go on. Boy, sit by yourself for a little bit. You're starting to freak. Bob a little. Yeah. Are you sure? Are you sure? So, uh, as a last word on the subject, um, try to get a scientific attitude. All right? Try to learn about science. I mean, the point of science is, is a way of proving that things actually work. As Tim Minchin said in his video, Storm, it's a nine-minute tone poem. You should watch it. It's on YouTube. Just look up Storm and Tim Minchin. That's M-I-N-C-H-I-N. He says, what do, you, what do you call alternative medicine that's been proven to work? Medicine. Okay? We know this works. She's happier. You are happier, aren't you? She's happier. Coco's happier. She's got her feathers back. She's quite demanding right now. She wants to be petted. Lorelai's not trying to kill herself anymore. She had adolescent onset feather destructive behavior. As soon as she started mating behavior, she started ripping her feathers out. <coughs> she looks good now. And she's just as pesty as she used to be. And she's on point one one. Okay, so she's on a normal dose and you couldn't even tell it. This one right here, she's on 0.12. This little girl, she's on 0.13 and she's smaller, but she, that's what it takes with her. And let's see, Cos is on 0.10. Salamander is on 0.15 right now because you know, he's got a problem with his pelvis, and sometimes I, he just starts freaking out. He's been chewing on his shoulder, so I got him up to 0.15, and that stopped his mutilation. 
I'm not sure what cued the behavior, what triggered it. But again, it's just sitting there waiting. It's not the first time that he's done feather destructive behavior, so. And he's one I used to be able to take on and off, but you know, that doesn't usually work. In the long run, they gotta stay on the drug, so. You're not gonna do that. She knows there's a wire in here and she's trying to give, <laughs> she's so smart. What she'll do is she'll start preening her and then work down to grab a hold of the wire and cut it in half. Snowball's on point one zero. That little girl is on point two two. If you get her below, you get sugar below point one seven, you'll be taking her to the vet and there'll be blood everywhere. Right, sugar? And if you don't think she's a happy girl, try to get between her and me and see what happens. Um, <laughs> she defends me with her life. Who are you up there? Wiggle the tail at me. Uh-huh. Ouch. Cecil's not on anything. Bob's not on any. Um, Peaches is on point one zero. Pippa? Pippa. Pip is on point one three. And if you think that makes it easier to work with them, think again. Oh, thank you, Pippa. What a nice gift. You pooped on me, you silly. Now that's because I, I moved the chair to be better for the cameras. And normally I'm not sitting in a spot where they can poop on me, but oh well. That's it. The patrons got a special video this month with, it was just a little over an hour and a half of us in the socialization room as we normally do. Um, but with the movies on and them sitting all over me and it was a blast. It, it, kind of thing we usually do in the socialization room, but only one had to be taken out. Pippa started getting aggressive towards Bob. It's not a bad thing out here. In there, it's a nightmare. So I had to take her out of the room. She wouldn't listen to me. It happens. Well, thanks for watching. Please become a, uh, a supporter. Go out to our webpage, click the donation tab, and just uh, make a donation. Or you can set up a monthly donation, you know, $2 a month or you know, $10 a month, whatever you can afford. And help us make these videos and keep these birds happy. Help keep Bob alive. He's going he's gonna to have surgery soon. I'm um, hoping not that soon. Um, I don't know how much longer he can take the, the cloacopaxi where they just tie it up. You know, eventually he's going to have to have everything tied up to his ribs, and that's an expensive surgery, and you know, the whole time I'll, I'll be just chewing my nails waiting for him to come through it. We welcome your feedback on our videos. We look forward to your insights, tips, questions, stories, and pictures. You can email us at cockatude at chloesanctuary.org, reach us on Twitter at sign Chloe Sanctuary, and join with us on our Facebook Chloe Sanctuary page. Science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower.